have you ever thought about why so many hospitals and so many doctors ask us to push on our backs with our knees wide open? It makes sense because if you're thinking about it, if my legs are wide open, then my vagina is probably wide open, which means that I'm giving my baby a lot of room. No, you're not. And most people probably won't tell you that, but in this video, I'm gonna tell you why you should not push on your back. And if you still end up pushing on your back, how you can change just one little thing to make your pelvis much more open and easy for baby to move out. If you're new here, my name is Chanel. I am a working mama. You can follow me on Instagram at a working mama so that you can get more daily tips for pregnancy, birth, and postpartum. My purpose is to educate you with the tools and the information that you need to have an empowered and fearless natural birth. If you're new to my channel, please make sure you subscribe so that you know when all of my videos come out. The more education that you know, the more you can make an informed decision for the type of birth that you deserve and desire. Okay. Now let's get into why you should not push on your back. I know that I'm probably gonna get a lot of pushback here, and yes, it is still possible to push on your back. I'm not saying it is not possible. I'm just saying there's a more effective way than pushing on your back because of the way that your pelvis is positioned and how open or closed the outlet of your pelvis is when you're pushing on your back. So if you've ever seen any sort of movie or TV show about birth, you typically will see mamas pushing on the bed with their knees wide open, the doctor is at the bottom of the bed and they are ready to catch the baby. Mama is typically in this position and then you'll see her bearing down or pushing over, holding her breath and pushing her baby down. Well, the reason that that is, is because it's a lot easier for our providers to actually see what's going on and see baby's head come out but it is not ideal for mama because when we have our knees open like this, it's actually closing the outlet of our pelvis. The outlet of our pelvis is just simply the opening of the bottom of our pelvis for baby to come out, okay? Now our pelvis is very flexible, so it moves in and out, but it depends on how our legs are positioned to know whether or not it's gonna move out or inward or if that outlet, that circle, the bottom of your pelvis is going to become smaller or if it's going to be wider. Now, logically speaking, we want it to be wider so that our baby has more room to fit through. But do you know how to actually make it wider? Here's what I want you to do. I want you to pause this video if you're not sitting somewhere comfortably and go somewhere and sit on a hard surface. Now, once you get to that surface, I want you to sit down preferably on a chair. I'm gonna do this on the ground just for the sake of not moving in this video, but I want you to sit down on a hard chair, a hard surface, and I want you to take both of your hands and find your sit bones, or these two little pointy bones underneath your butt, and I want you to put one hand under each of those sit bones. Once you find your sit bones, I want you to take your feet and put them on the ground flat, and I want you to move your knees together, and then I want you to move your knees outward as far as you can and then back together and then outward what I want you to notice is what is happening with those bones those sit bones as you move your knees outward and as you move your knees together what you should notice is as you move your knees outward those bones come closer together and as you move your knees together those bones move further away from each other that is the outlet of our pelvis so think about it if my knees are out like this what is happening with my pelvis, the outlet of my pelvis, those sit bones? They got closer together. So we're making it smaller. We're making that circle or that outlet smaller for baby to exit. So it's not that it's impossible to, to push on your back. It's just that you're not giving baby that much room, which makes it a little bit more difficult for baby to come out. So in a perfect world, one, we would not be sitting on our backs or laying on our backs because there are so many other positions that will allow our knees, right, to be more narrow than our ankles. That's what we just saw. When our hands were under our butts, our knees went in and our ankles moved outward, which provided a much wider space for baby to move out. Some of the most common positions for that outlet to be open are hands and knees, because if I'm on hands and knees, I can actually easily shift my knees in and bring my ankles outward. And that is going to bring a lot of opening for our pelvic outlet. Now, if you're unable to be in a hands and knees position, 
you have to know you also have the right to be in hands and knees position if you're comfortable. So make sure that you, if that's a position that you want to be in, make sure you discuss that and put that on your birth plan to talk to your provider about. But if you are not able to be on hands and knees for whatever reason, or you don't feel strong on hands and knees, I actually pushed on hands and knees, didn't expect to, but that's just where I felt the strongest. You can also lay on your side. And that's also going to help you have a knees in ankles out position so that we continue to open up the pelvis so if we're on our side and this is also a good position if you end up getting an epidural because you can move on to your side one of your legs will be down this one will be up but as somebody is holding it or if you have it in the stirrup you can just have somebody hold your ankle up much higher than your knee okay so this is also going to open up that outlet that's also a good position if you're kind of tired or if you have an epidural. But if you still end up on your back, you can still open up your outlet in a way that will be much wider than your knees being outward. And that is to push like this. If your knees are being held up, your partner or your nurses can actually just kind of help shift your knees in or pull, pull or pull your ankles outward a little bit further. Um, you can also flatten the bed so that you're not at this angle because when you're at this angle, kind of sitting up and bearing over your belly, it might give you a little bit more pressure on your belly to push baby out, but because of how our pelvis is kind of curved under in this position, it still makes it a little bit more difficult for baby to move around your pelvis. And so when your body is flat or when you're laying flat on your back, it actually makes your spine a lot more neutral and in line with one another, which gives baby a much clearer and straight pathway to exit your body. So if you end up on your back, I would highly encourage you to make sure that your knees are in, your ankles are out when you are pushing or any position at that matter, if you're pushing knees in, ankles out, because we wanna open up the outlet of the pelvis. But if you end up on your back, remember, lay flat on your back, lay the bed flat. If you're in a hospital, if you're at a birthing center, you're at home, you can still lay flat on your back and then have your knees up and your ankles out, knees in, ankles out. It's gonna provide a lot of room for baby. So hopefully this video is helpful for you. Keep this in mind when you are in labor, when you get closer to the end of labor, transition or pushing, that's when we wanna make sure our knees are in and our ankles are out. It doesn't have to be the whole time because we only really need to open up our outlet after baby is engaged into our pelvis. At the beginning, we need to open up our inlet. So make sure that you check out the other video that I have linked below in the description if you wanna know how to open up the inlet of your pelvis, which is much more feasible and realistic and necessary for when you are in early labor or even the beginning of active labor before a baby is even engaged in your pelvis. So check that out below so that you know all about how to move during your labor and what are effective ways to open up the right parts of your pelvis at the right time. If you thought this video was helpful, make sure that you hit the thumbs up button. This helps me know what y'all like and what you don't like. Make sure you follow me on Instagram for more daily tips and comment below if you've heard this before or if you've seen this before or if you're gonna try it when you push your baby out. If it does work for you, also comment below or write me so that I can know that it was effective and helpful for you. Thank you guys so much for coming. I will see you on the next video. Love you all. Mwah.